Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be building the Lego Friends Heart Lake City Community Centre which is set 41748. I bought this because it's a wonderfully colourful building but it's also quite friendsified so I think I'm going to have to modify it a little bit before putting it into my city. It's also possible to combine this set with the Friends Community Kitchen, they stack on top of each other. Um, so I sort of want to see how tall the community centre is on its own before I purchase the community kitchen. I am also undecided about whether I want to leave this set open backed. None of the other buildings in my city are open. They're all, you know, full buildings, all four sides. Uh, so we're just going to have to see how it looks and where I can position it in my city. Inside the box there are 11 bags of Lego. I think it probably follows a pattern of sort of build the outside of a level and then fill in the details, the interior. That might get a bit tedious and repetitive, but we'll see. It's also got one sticker sheet and then four instruction manuals. Two of which are shiny and two of which aren't, which is a bit odd, but let's get cracking and take a look at the build. Bag one lays the foundations of the building. It includes one mini doll. Um, I'm not going to go into the backstory or the lore of these friends characters. I can take or leave that. Um, I do like her flares and the hairpiece is interesting, uh, but mini dolls don't make it into my city, so I'm not that fussed. I do like these steps and also the tiling. I think that's going to make a nice differentiation from the main pavement areas in my city. I also like the decoration on even just this exterior bit. I don't have many dark green foliage pieces and I like the contrast between the normal coloured green. It's good. It's also the first time I've come across these 3x3 three three corner plates and I think they're going to come in handy in a lot of builds. But yeah, I think bag one has been a great start and I'm interested to see how this set develops. I think from now on I'm going to go through this set level by level as opposed to bag by bag. I really like the teal awnings over the windows on this blue level and also the textured white corners. So we've added a lovely yellow bench to the exterior. We've got another mini doll who's painting it. Around the other side we've added a sort of injured dog. They've got wheels to help them walk. I'm assuming there's probably some sort of vet friend set that ties in with that. Then moving on to the interior, it's clear that this is a music room. We've got a stage area that includes a mechanism to swivel someone around and also a piano and a guitar. I like the sticker in that section, the blue one with the guitar. So let's now take a look at the next level, which I think is the green one. First up, I absolutely love the plant decoration on this level. That coral colour is my absolute favourite. Around the other side, we've got two hanging baskets. They do look slightly clunky, but I think I'm going to keep them because I love that coral, the pink and the purple all together. Great colour combinations in Lego Friends that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of putting together myself. I also love that big green window and I think it just goes to show how much more sophisticated this friend set looks than some of the previous ones. Inside we have what I think is meant to be some sort of creator studio. Sorry to that fallen over mini doll but it might be your own fault because you're a mini doll. You might have noticed I don't really sort of look at the instructions and see what these things are supposed to be. I like to form my own opinion of what they are. I absolutely love these red seats. They're really clever in how they formed them. Like that arch bit is just like a little horn, you know those fang pieces. The triangular patterned artwork in the background is the epitome of what I thought was cool in about 2004-2005, so that can stay. We've also got a swivel computer chair, which I'm sure is not very ergonomic. Probably very bad for your muscles, but it looks nice. And also let's take another look at that mini doll. I love the brightness of the torso, his t-shirt, but again, mini dolls, not for me. So you can stack these levels in whatever order you like. But so far I like how the teal of the blue levels awnings blends and sort of merges into that teal rim around the bottom of the green level. Next up we have the yellow floor which is probably the one I have the most problem with. The water slide and sort of mid-air jacuzzi pool is the most nonsensical thing about this set for me. There's actually no way for mini dolls to get into that slide once you've got the other layer on top of it. I do really like the interior of this level though. It's like a games room, so it's got video games. That's definitely Mario Kart. And a board game section which has some really nice stickers. It's it's good detail. But yeah, I don't know what Lego Friends' obsession with adding water slides to everything is, but it's definitely gonna have to go. It's not going in my city like that. The final level is the pink level. It's looking a bit phosphorescent in this video. That's just the lighting. I was filming this on the darkest day of the year, which means lots of lights and the risk of it looking very odd. 
The massive graffiti tile is probably the largest tile I've ever owned. I think it looks vibrant and eye-catching. I really like that massive window. I think they've done well in this set to mix up how the windows look on the different levels, not being too repetitive in that way. Inside we have a bit of, I think it's like an artist studio. It's got a massive industrial sized sewing machine and also an easel with sort of paints. I think they must be fabric paints because that's definitely a t-shirt on that easel. And the mechanism to make the sewing machine move is actually oddly realistic. I really like it. <laughs> we also have another mini doll who's wearing one of those t-shirts. Again, you can stack the floors in any order, but I'm pretty satisfied with like the official order because the pink layer ties in with the pink and purple of the awning over that pool area. So finally we're adding the roof and up there they have, I mean I guess it's sort of, it, it's a bit like a swing but it's a mechanism to allow a mini doll to be painting on that graffiti board. Um, that's a bit gimmicky for me, I'm not sure I'm going to keep that. We've also got a greenhouse which I assume is growing the produce for what would be cooked in the community kitchen. That's a nice little tie-in and it sort of makes me want to get the community kitchen, but we'll see how tall this is. There's an adorable little bee tile in there that I don't think I've had before, but it's so cute. We also got another mini doll who's also wearing those t-shirts from that last floor. I assume they're the staff for the community centre. So lastly, we've added sort of the finishing touches to the whole set. I absolutely love that red tree. I've never had foliage pieces in red before. That's, it looks great and just something a bit different to add to the city. There's a water butt that's been added to the roof. I've never seen a lilac one before, but it looks great. And I also love the tire swing and also the lamp posts that have been added to the ground floor. I think it's nice to add something a bit different around the bottom of buildings to add a bit of like diversity and places where you can pose different minifigures. Overall, I think this is a really fun set and it's got a lot of scope for playability. I think the community center idea has allowed Lego to create Something a bit different, you wouldn't get sort of all these scenarios in any of the other sets. In terms of adding this set to my city, I was actually considering buying two copies of the set and combining the floors to create a bigger building. I wasn't sure how feasible that was with the new L-shaped sort of floor pieces. It's definitely possible. You would obviously need some extra pieces to fill in those gaps and attach the two floor plates together. I don't think I'm actually going to do that because I don't think I would get enough out of spending money on another copy of the set. Um, like the interior would be quite repetitive. And also you would end up with no side that's like the back side. It would be hard to put it up against another building. I think I'm just going to modify the one set. That's going to involve getting rid of the slide in the little pool area. And I think I'm also going to end up getting rid of the swing because I think I'm going to want to use some of these yellow bricks to fill in on the yellow floor. So yeah, I went ahead and did that. I didn't need any extra bricks or anything. I just created a little balcony for the yellow floor. I think it looks a lot more sophisticated and I got rid of that swing. Most of the build for that is still there, but obviously it doesn't function as a swing. I'm quite happy with how that looks. I think it's in keeping with the floor and it goes well with the other floors as well. So yeah, I'll pan out and you can get a look at how the building looks now I've modified it a bit. I've realised that the extra pavement bit around the bottom of the set is going to cause me a bit of a problem when trying to add it to my city. The building itself is I think 16 by 16 studs and that's the only width I've got room for at the back of my Lego city. So I either need to shrink this or make some more room. I think that's actually a key factor that has made me not want to get the community kitchen anymore because the floor space required to do the build as it's supposed to be it's like 24 by wait yeah i think 24 by like 48 studs if you do that whole thing i might have calculated that wrong but it is quite big you'd end up with a bit of dead air space above that bit to the right which feels like a bit of a waste if I put it on top of a 32 by 32 base plate, you can see that it's over half of the plate in both sides, like in both dimensions, which is a bit of a headache for my city because I sort of work in 16 by 32 blocks. Um, so I think I'm going to end up just adding this to a 32 by 32 base plate and trying to make room for that base plate in my city and then maybe just adding something else to it afterwards or that will just be a hidden part in my city that is just dead space but space that you can't actually see. 
I also might try and make it a little bit more compact by getting rid of those green sections and moving everything in a little bit more just to make it less woggly on the edges if you know what I mean. But yeah, to fit that 32 by 32 base plate into my city, I'm going to have to make a big change. I can only fit a 16 by 32 base plate back there at the moment. So I think it is time to get rid of my road and maybe bring absolutely everything, every single building in my city, forward closer to the edge of my shelf. I have removed the road plates from the first two buildings in my city and it's time to bring them forward. This is not an easy task. Um, pieces tend to fall between the shelves and you have to like hug the shelf and you know get your hands in between the slots to do it. Oh and try and not lose a car in the process. Um, yeah this wasn't fun and I had to do it for the whole street. <laughs> I really need to take everything off this shelf at some point and just sort all the foam board out because it's all getting a bit wiggly woggly and you know slightly out of place which makes it hard to move things so maybe that's a job for after Christmas. It was worth it though because I can now fit an entire base plate back there which I think is going to open up a lot more opportunities for the city. Like I can fit whole modulars back there now which is kind of insane to me. <laughs> it, it's basically doubled the space that I have. So now I'm just trying out different places to put the community centre. I really like the idea of having it flush against one of the other buildings because obviously that would hide the interior. But the problem is it's taller than every other building in the city, so wherever I put it, if it's flush against a building, I'm going to be able to see inside, which is not good. I also need to find somewhere for it where that tyre swing is not going to overhang a road. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, so I think I'm going to try it on the other side and just see how it looks there. I actually really like it on the other side. It's created a nice alleyway between the community centre and the next building. I've had to reverse build the ground floor so that the swing is in that alleyway, not still facing out into the road. And having it flush against the wall and at this side of my city, because this is where the corner is, you're never going to obviously be able to see that the interior is open. I think it's a good place to hide that. It means I don't have to spend a load of money filling it in. Heading back around to the front, I'm actually really happy with the height of this building. It's the tallest building in my city now, and I think adding the community kitchen would just make it that bit too tall. I think it would look a bit odd. So I'm quite happy that I don't need to spend that money. <laughs> I've gone ahead and tiled the base plate with the tiles that I had left. Obviously, I'm going to need to buy some more. But I've got enough of the tiling done on that left side that I think we're going to get a good idea of how it's going to look when it's done. Um... I've had to amend some of the tiling, well not the tiling, just what's underneath that corner of tiles um, to get the pavement tiling to be flush underneath it, uh, but that worked quite well and yeah, let's see what it looks like in the city. So I've added the rest of those road plates back so that they hit the wall and I've added the community centre in and tiled up the pavement and I think it looks fantastic. I'm going to have to go on a hunt for some minifigures to add to it because obviously it's got none in at the moment because it's a mini doll set. And I'm also definitely going to have to finish off that tiling and maybe add a bit more decoration to that alleyway. I don't actually really remember what that side of the corner garage looks like. I think it's quite plain and basic and there might be a door back there. Let's have a look if I can get my camera around. Yep, not very well but there's quite a lot of space back there to... I don't know, maybe add some bins or something. <laughs> but yeah, now that I've got a building back there, I'm feeling super motivated to get some other buildings in that back row. I think that's going to mean adding some more roads perpendicular to the front like this one, which is going to mean shifting a lot of buildings around. So stay tuned for that in the new year. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas, whatever you're doing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.